Thank you once again for joining me on Crunch Econometrics. We'll be looking at error component models. In this video series, we will have an understanding of error component models, consider one-way error component model, how to estimate, interpret, and perform the pullability test. Next, we will look at two-way error component model, we will also estimate, interpret the results, and perform the pullability test. By way of encouragement, please watch these videos in sequential order. Let's have a preamble. Error component models are used in pooled and panel data analysis. And by now, we know that a panel data is also known as longitudinal data. They refer to a data set that has multiple observations over multiple time periods. A panel data also has two dimensions, the spatial, which is the cross-sectional, and temporal, which is the time series. In general, there can be two types of panels, micro panel and a macro panel. A micro panel is a survey panel with a large sample of units over usually a short period of time. While a macro panel consists of a large number of groups or units over a large number of years. Also, we can have balanced and unbalanced panel. A balanced panel does not have any missing values, whereas an unbalanced panel have missing values. Panel data can also be either long or short. A short panel has n greater than t, that is the number of cross sections being more than the number of time periods, while a long panel has n less than t. Let's consider a cross-sectional model. Equation 1 is a cross-sectional model. In this example, it contains uh, a sample of 50 households. And one peculiarity of cross-sectional model is that it fails to capture the cross-sectional or individual or panel-specific heterogeneity. Because in this model, every individual is different from one another. Therefore, if they are to be captured, if their differences are to be captured, it will require the inclusion of 50 dummy variables without a constant. If we are going to include a constant, then we will include 49 dummy variables. But this will be impossible to estimate, the reason being that the number of observations is quite lower than the number of parameters to be estimated. How about a time series model? Equation 2 is an example of a time series model given the subscript T. The same problem haunts a time series model. In this example, I have a multivariate time series regression with two explanatory variables, such that every time point in the system is different from one another. And if we are to capture the time heterogeneity in this model, we will need to include t time dummies, and which will also make the estimation to break down. So this is where panel data comes in with a solution. The main advantage of the panel data comes from its solution to the difficulties involved in interpreting the regression coefficients in the framework of either a cross-sectional only sample or a time series only sample or model. A cross-sectional variable by now you know is denoted by a subscript i, while a time series is denoted by a subscript t. Therefore, a panel data variable is given by subscript it for a given case at a particular time. So, combining equations 1 and 2, we have a pool data obtained in the form of a panel data given as equation 3, where we have the subscript it. So whenever you see a subscript IT together like this is an example of a panel data model or a panel data equation. Now, the question is, how do we account for the cross-section and time heterogeneity in the model? This can be done by using what is known as a two-way error component assumption for the disturbance term UIT, whereby the disturbance term UIT is further distributed or divided 
into subcomponents where you have a component capturing individual differences, a component capturing time differences, and the remaining random error term. So if we are to rewrite equation three as equation three prime, we can see that the distribution of the error term is as shown. This is the distribution of the error term capturing individual differences in the model. The lambda t is for the time differences, and this is the remaining random error term that is iid. So the individual differences and the time differences in the model are known as the within components, where the remaining random error is known as the between components. Now, depending upon the assumption about these error components, we can have two types of panel data models, either fixed effects or random effects. So if we assume that the individual and time differences are fixed parameters to be estimated, and the random error term is distributed with a zero mean and a constant variance, then we have a two-way fixed effect, or a simple least squares dummy variable model given the assumptions that we have made. On the other hand, if we assume that all this composition of the error term are random, then that means we are going to have a two-way random effects error components model. And equation three prime, which I showed you before, cannot be rewritten as equation five, whereby the individual differences now in the model is now added in composition to the random error term because of the assumption that is being made about the disturbance UIT. So given the assumption of the random error term will determine whether you are going to estimate a fixed effects model or a random effects model. So if equation three is a two-way error component model, what is a one-way error component model? Remember, equation three is now rewritten as equation three prime. So a one-way error component model is when only one component is included in the model. Aside the remaining error term, what do I mean? Let's look at equation five and six. In equation five, you only have the component representing individual differences. And in equation six, you only have the component representing time differences. Unlike equation three prime, where you have two of them, this representing individual differences and this representing time differences. So equation three prime is an example of a two-way error component, while equations five and six are examples of one-way error components. Another thing I need to emphasize is that Equation 5 will only have cross-sectional dummies, and equation 6 will only have time dummies. I wrote here, I said, we can have one-way error components fixed, or one-way error components random effects model, with the appropriate assumptions about the error component. It's all about the assumptions you give concerning the error structure. That is, whether mu i or lambda t is assumed to be fixed or random. So with this, I have given you a recap or a background information about what error component model is all about. These have been covered. Please stay with me in my next video. I will put you through how to estimate a one-way error component model vis-a-vis -a, -vis a model that has a common intercept. I will always encourage you to please support video tutorials with reading. Video tutorials are not sufficient enough. Please grab a copy of these textbooks or publications to strengthen your understanding of error component models. I've also included my two papers here in number five and six. They are available for free download on my website, but you have to cut and check out at zero cost. So if you need any of these my papers, please, they are available freely on my website. I appreciate you for staying with me. Thank you so much for those who have subscribed and for those who have shared the link of my video uh, to their students and their academic community. For those who have interacted with me on all my platforms as shown on the screen, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.